Good morning. Chapter 9. Clementine. I cannot look at your green head for one more day, my mom said as soon as I woke up on Sunday morning. So right after breakfast, she took me into the kitchen and started scrubbing my head with scouring powder and saying things I have never heard a TV mother say. She scrubbed so hard, she probably made a hole right through my head skin and my head bone. And now everybody can see right into my brains and I better not do any more cartwheels. All the time, I watched out the kitchen window from Margaret's feet. Margaret's brother is not my special friend, I told my mother, this in case she thought I was watching out for Mitchell's feet, which I was not, because he's not my special friend. My mother kept on scrubbing and all she said was, that's nice, which is what grown-ups say when they're not paying attention to you. Suddenly, with my amazing corner eyes, I saw my dad, what my dad was reading to my brother in the living room. Stop, I yelled. Then I flew over and jumped on his lap and slammed the book shut just in time. Lima Bean is little, Dad, I reminded him. He'd get scared of those shoes. First of all, my bro first of all, your brother's name isn't Lima Bean, said my dad. And second of all, what shoes, Clementine? I told you he was not so good at paying attention. Those shoes are pretty hard to miss. The pointy green ones on the bear, I whispered, page 14, which I know because, okay, fine. I look at that page a lot. Some days I like to scare myself. Today was not one of those days though. It's just a picture sport, dad said, it's not real. Do you want to try looking at me right with me right here? No, I yelled. And then I was mad because now those pointy shoes were stuck in my head, going to worry me all day. I jumped off my dad's lap and ran back into the kitchen because I have discovered that lots of foods are round. Cookies, hamburgers, pizzas, donuts, cupcakes, apples, you name it, all good stuff is round. I grabbed two slices of bologna and I bit them into a pair of glasses, which is a trick I invented and only I know, and now you will too. Fold a slice of bologna in half and then bite right in the middle of the flat side. Do it again, then slap the circles over your eyes and you have bologna glasses. Here's a picture of that. And then because I'm so good of a sister and Okay, fine, because I was still hungry. I made a pair for my brother, too. Here, Peapod, I said, climbing back into my dad's lap and slapping my brother's pair onto his eyes. Put on your glasses. My brother started laughing so hard he spit up his breakfast waffles, and my parents said, Clementine, please, at exactly the same time which I think they practice at night when I'm asleep, but they were laughing too. And suddenly it was a pretty good day in spite of the holes scrubbed in my head. The good day feeling made me think all about all the bad day feelings I'd been having this week. And that made me think about Margaret. And then the best of all idea of all sprung right into my brain because I am so good at paying attention. I know all the things that Margaret likes. So I ran around my apartment gathering them up. Polka Dottie's flea collar, because Margaret loved my old cat. Pepperoni, because that's the only kind of pizza I've ever seen her eat. The red shoes Margaret makes me put on Barbie every time we play. A blue jay feather from my collection, because her favorite color is blue. Some M&Ms, because she breathed on mine. My charm bracelet, because she always, I wish, makes I wish eyes at it. Lace ripped from my party socks because I borrowed them from Margaret one time and I forgot to tell her. Pink sparkle nail polish because she tried to borrow it from me, but I caught her. A dumb bumblebee, I don't know why. The rest of the red curly hair I cut off because that's how we got into all this trouble in the first place. Then I got my mother's favorite hat, a big bottle of glue and my dad's aftershave which Margaret and I love to squirt all over us because it such, has such a heavenly aroma. I glued and I glued and I glued and I squirted and squirted and squirted and I smiled. Then I ran out and guess who I met in the elevator?
Margaret, without Amanda Lee. I have something for you, we both said at exactly the same time, which we have never practiced before. Then I handed her the Margaret hat, and she handed me a bag. Inside was a brand new, not sat on, sparkle glitter paint set. I got it at the mall, Margaret said. Then without even a grown up telling her to, she told me she was sorry she was mean to me at my birthday. I'm sorry about your hair, I said. Okay, fine, we both said. And it was, for one minute. I have to go, Margaret said. I'll see you tonight. Yep, see you tonight, I said. Then I said, um, what's tonight? The party. Your parents invited us. Oh, right, I said. I knew that, but I didn't. Uh-oh. If my parents were having a party and I didn't know about it, that meant it was a surprise party. Surprise party are either for birthdays or goings away. It wasn't my birthday anymore.